So in Islam, if you become a Muslim one day, inshallah, and you marry a Muslim woman, say inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. Uh, Almighty, do you know anything about Islam? A bit, yeah. Okay, tell me what you know and what you don't know. I will try to add on it. So what, what do you know so far about Islam? Well, I just, I know it, it's a religion. Um, I know yes. that it's an Abrahamic religion. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I don't know okay. where to begin, really. Okay, no problem. So do you, our concept of God Almighty, do you know what our beliefs are when it comes to God? Um, uh, to, to, to some extent. Okay, let me give some detail. Yeah. So, for example, we have the Christians who believe in monotheism. They claim. We Muslims claim to believe in monotheism. The Jews claim to be monotheists. Even the Hindus will say, yeah, you know, we ultimately we are monotheistic. So we say, what does it, what, what does, uh, what distinguishes Islam from the rest? What does that word mean? What the, the, is it? Monotheism. Monotheism. So it's monotheism is like basically the belief in one God. Right. But Christians, yeah, yeah. for example, say that they believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they'll say these are three different persons, but one God. Yeah. We say in Islam that this is blasphemy towards God. How? For example, in Islam, we have a certain concept in place. We say that God Almighty, we single him out in his lordship. So we say when God Almighty created us, when he sustains us, when he looks after us, he does that alone without the aid and the help of, do you know Prophet Muhammad? Yeah. Okay, so he doesn't need the help of Prophet Muhammad. He doesn't need the help of Jesus. We believe they were prophets. He does that by himself. Yeah. That's good. Now, the Christians might have a similar belief, but the second principle we have in Islam, which distinguishes Islam from the rest of the religions, is the, uh, the concept that we single out God when it comes to worship. Yeah. When you go to a Christian, the Christian will say, we worship God, but we ask in the name of Jesus. So we say, well, that doesn't really make sense. It's blasphemy towards God. Why? Because in Islam, we believe that we should have a direct relationship with God without any intermediaries, no secretaries, none of that, yeah? So we go to God Almighty directly. And the third thing that we have in Islam is we don't share the God's, God's attributes with human beings. So God is all-knowing. We don't come and say, this prophet was all-knowing. Yeah? Can I put this on you? Sure. Just if you walk away with it, please come back. So we say that God Almighty, we don't say that God is all-knowing, but I'm also all-knowing. Why? Because I'm a human being. I'm fallible. So in Islam, we say that we should worship God and God alone. We believe that God is not a man. We don't believe he has a gender. We, we say there is nothing like him. And where we differ with the Christians is the Christians say they believe that God came down as a man. Okay. As a person who believes, I think you're a theist. You don't have any religion? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so as a theist, would you ever come to the conclusion or find the need to believe that God is a man? Well, no, I, I, I certainly believe that God is, God is its own entity. Thank you. Yeah. So now we call that in Islam the fitrah. The fitrah means that you have an innate disposition the way God has created you. That, for example, my phone is programmed in a specific way that it would not do a function that is not allowed. For example, the programmer, Steve Jobs, whoever it may be, has set a specific program that stops it from doing something that it can't do. Yeah? So, therefore, also, it's got patterns in place that it recognizes. For example, when I need to put my code, like let's say, I need to put my code in place. Yeah? So, it's got all that function. It, it acknowledges my finger touching it. It's created in that manner. So, with you, the moment I said, would you believe as a theist that God is a man? You said, no, I believe God has his own entity. That shows us that you are closer to Islam than any other religion. Why? Because the concept is very simple. God is nothing like his creation because he's created us. If you make a, a chair, you don't become a chair. Yeah. Simple as that. So what you just said there is an essence of what Islam, the belief system is. So repeat after me. I should, no, I'm joking. <laughs> so that so far is good. Can I ask you to open, maybe inside internally, make a prayer to God maybe and just say, you know what? Give me a sign. Maybe, you know, if you're there, if you're true. Because I made this 10 years ago. I came to Islam 10 years ago. When I came to Islam, I met him. Sadly, my life went a bit down. You weren't born, uh, you weren't born in Islam? No, I came to Islam 10 years ago. Then I met this guy. Uh, I take credit for that. <laughs> so, were, were you me... born in Islam? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I started practicing when I was like 17. Before, that, I wouldn't Before he was a partying, but he's repented for that. Party! <laughs> <laughs> Can you do me a favor, just internally, open a verse in the Quran, because we believe this whole book has a message for all of us, including me. Open it to a specific verse and let's read it. But internally, maybe just any, any verse, but internally, just say if God, if, send me a sign, maybe, you know. So is this the start of it? Or? Well, you've opened it randomly, no problem. Pick a verse. 34. 34. Okay, I hope it's not so many stars. <laughs> <laughs>
It is. <laughs> it's not a desire. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Okay. 34. Let's go to verse 34. Yeah. So 34, it says, Men are in charge of women by the right of what Allah has given over them. Over them. Sorry. Over uh, others. And they have spent. Properly, you know, he cannot uh, read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To spend over them. Yeah. From their wealth. The righteous women are obedient, devoutly obedient, guarding their husband's absence which, which, with what Allah has given them to God. But the wise from whom you fear uh, arrogance, advise them. Then forsake them in bed. And uh, next uh, um, verse is basically, you have to give some, um, what's the word? Um, context? No, not context. So basically, if you're dealing with a woman who is basic argument sake, she is crossing her limits, you can use some kind of a force to restrain. Yeah? So this verse is now very clear. A lot of Muslims get, they're scared to read this verse. But it's very profound. You know why? This ties perfectly to today's time. When we have, for example, gender roles mixed between each other, our God Almighty now is saying that as a man, you are the maintainer and protector. It's giving you your role of what your duty is. Now in today's time, you have a lot of deadbeat dads. Men who are going and sleeping around are not given the rights of a woman. So what Islam has done is told the men, the believing men, that you have a degree over your wife in the context of responsibility. When you are walking down the road, and if somebody says something to your wife, does your wife fight or do you fight? What do you mean? What, fight. If somebody comes in... Of course me, yeah. Of course you. When it comes to providing, God Almighty says you are also responsible to provide for her. So in Islam, if you become a Muslim one day, inshallah, and you marry a Muslim woman, say inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, and God, then, is God willing, right? God willing, yeah, yeah. So you are responsible, for example, that you go and, we don't believe in sex outside of marriage. You go speak to her father. You ask for her hand. There'll be a wedding. You give a dowry, yeah? These are the rights given to the woman. And she always, also because of her biology, she is prone to be vulnerable. She is prone to be, wanting to be protected. So here, God Almighty has given stipulation. And you know what's really beautiful about this verse? which you don't see in any other scripture. It tells you how to deal with marital disputes. So there is another verse here, it talks about if the woman fears rebellion from the husband, what she should do. So Islam has come down with real life situations to real life problems. If you look at the Bible and other religions, it's very vague. If I have a problem with my wife, what do I do? Islam goes into the detail. It says first, if you have a dispute with your wife, talk to her. Look darling, you're doing this for example. If you're arguing with a person's wife is flirting with other women. You know what? I don't like you doing that. I found it very disrespectful. Yeah. She carries on. Allah says, move from the bed. Now, why move from the bed? Women are emotional creatures. They want to, they want to feel like love. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. The moment you move from the bed, you're depriving her of that. And the reason you're doing that is so she can understand she's hurt you. She's caused you pain. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Now, if this woman is flirting with another man, and on top of that, she's trying to get violent with you, Allah says you have a right to restrain. You have a right because you're stronger than her. But you know what's very interesting? In the other verse where it says that when the woman rebe uh, sees rebellion from her husband, God Almighty doesn't tell her to come and restrain you. Why? Because she's at a disadvantage. Because you're physically stronger. Imagine her trying to grab you and you've got big biceps here. I, mean, I don't want to mess with you. So do you see how God Almighty deals with the real life situation by telling her if you feel rebellious, from the husband, get the family involved. Yeah. Because now it's like the patriarch in the sense where the brother and the, 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 the brother, the father is getting involved now. Do you get it? Yeah. Like why you're, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, of course. This is the biggest problem we face in today's time. That's why it's so amazing that you open this verse because today we're dealing with people, men are not men, women are not women, yeah? Promiscuity and all these things have destroyed the fabric of society. And this is why we see the breakdown of the family unit, which has a ripple effect on the children. And you see most of these kids who are in gangs, leaving school to be sexual, like even in America, there was a study done about 40, 50 years ago, 5% of American women were single mothers. Do you know what the figures are now? No. Going to 50%. Why? It all goes back to this, yeah? So I would say personally, this is a gift from me to you. Thank I don't you. want to give you a sermon here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me if there's anything you would like with the verse as well. Not at all, I just appreciate it. No, it's, it's, it's a pleasure, yeah. Dan. Well, well spoken. I don't think so. I'm, I'm learning from the bestie, as you can see, they're teaching me. How, how did I do? Mashallah, amazing. He's giving me, out of 10? 11. 11. 11. Why you need to? 10, man? 11. 11. 11. Inshallah, Dan, we all make it to heaven. Thank but, you. Dan, it was a pleasure. What watch do you have? Let me see. Sorry? What your watch? Oh, it's just Samsung. Samsung. Oh, yeah, I got, I got iPhone. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was on Samsung. I got him on iPhone now. Oh, really? <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna convert you to iPhone and Islam, inshallah. <laughs> well represented. Yes, for sure. Dan, it's a pleasure. Um, I do videos on YouTube. My name is Ali Dawa. 
but you've got better people like brother uh, here, Ismail. Ismail, and you've got brother Zishan. Uh, unsubscribe to his channel, please. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was a pleasure, man. If you have any questions, um, and yeah, inshallah, Allah guide you to Islam. Read it with an open mind. I did this 10 years ago. You know, I was looking, I was lost. I was a fierce just like you, and I came to Islam. So yeah, that's it, Dan. It's a pleasure. You got the swagger. You got the biceps. Uh, <laughs> it by, by, your footwear. Yeah, you know, exactly. Sensationally calm, <laughs> yes. calm footwear. Chill by the way, footwear. I'll give you a secret. Don't tell anybody. You're allowed to have four wives. A oh, four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you come to Islam, you can have two wives. I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. But don't tell anybody. If your wife, first wife kills you, I'll do the Janazah prayer. Your funeral prayer. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Can I give you this back? Yes. Oh. No, no, keep it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dan, it's a pleasure. Right. Take it. Look after yourself. Nice to meet you guys. Take care. Nice to meet you. Yes. Nice. Take care, Dan. Look after yourself. I mean, look, you know what? I love talking to sincere people like this brother here. He's open. He listened. He opened a very controversial verse. But, wallahi, let me tell you something. As Muslims, we are proud of that verse. That verse is there to deal with a real life situation. And alhamdulillah, in today's time, we need it the most. And inshallah, Allah sends more sincere people in it. I mean, be honest, is it the same speaking to someone that's hostile compared to someone that's sincere when it's in the da'wah? Absolutely not. The brother that I was talking to earlier, Gabriel, he told me, he's like, I could tell you were holding back. And I'm like, yeah, of course, because I reciprocate energy. If you come to me humble, because he said to me, he's like, I don't know anything about your religion. Or like, teach, you know, he's basically telling me, come teach me something about your religion. If you come with that attitude, you don't come, you know, arrogant. Trying to you know, say things that you don't know anything about. Are you talking about give, no, of course not. <laughs> never. Of course not. Never. So yeah. you come with that attitude. Yeah. We're gonna give you nothing but warmth and and yeah. you know blessings your way. So now we, we only wanna at the end of the day we have to hold our own as Muslims. We're not gonna be meek and turn the other cheek. Somebody that comes to attack our religion comes disingenuous, comes with an agenda. Mm. But if somebody is uh, you know coming with the right intentions, sincere, we're gonna give them nothing but love. Exactly. 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 Same with you. Like, I'll be honest with you, sometimes when I talk to a sincere person, sometimes I get a bit stuck in the sense because I'm so dealing with hosti host hostility. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, how do I talk to this sincere yeah, person? Yeah, yeah. Do you get it? I'm 100%. like, well, what do I say to them next? Because we're so like, and this is very important because sometimes coming to speak is kind of hard on your heart. And we need to like detox and be like, well, hold on a second. This guy is actually sincere. Let's give him actual dawa. Do you not feel like that? No. <laughs> so next time, <laughs> his heart is always soft, you know never why? hardens. Yeah. Because I deliberately pick out the people that, that because I'm not as known in Speaker's Corner, so I don't get Maybe you're known people. to the angels. Inshallah. Oh, inshallah. So, no, what I'm saying is that the hostile people don't see me as much of a threat. Mm. So I use that to my advantage. So I just go to the side yeah. and I speak to the people that, you know, I deliberately, I like those people that, yeah. you know, like this individual and mm. other brothers. The other people, I just say, you know what, Masalama. And that's how it should be. You know why? It's very important because it reminds me of Surah Abasa. When, if you look at it, Allah in the Quran, the blind man, his heart was open, but his eyes couldn't see. And the mushrikeen, their hearts were blind, but their eyes couldn't see. It tells us, brothers and sisters, do not waste your time with absolute ignoramuses. Go and, like Allah says in the Quran, you are not blameworthy to the one who's a rebel who doesn't want to listen, if he, if he doesn't come to guidance. But the one who's coming and he's interested, he wants to know, give him your attention. We have brothers who come here and speak to absolute waste of time. Go speak to that flipping tree, it's better for you. Allah, you give some benefit to the world. So, so the point is, please, when it comes to dawah, if you sense insincerity, I cut it, bro. In the moment I'm like, this guy's insincere, oh, salam alaikum. Simple as that. Thank you, I'm here with the two champs here. Ismail, may I bless you? Anything you want to say about it? No, Imam Shafi, I mean, to your point, yeah. completely agrees with this. Uh, Brothers need to know that, like, yeah. not every debate is worth having. Yes. You know, like, we're not supposed to be debate machines. In fact, yes. one of the most touching um, lectures that I listened to was Brother Hamza Zortis about debate not being the default position of dawah. Yes, exactly. It's not. It hardens your heart yes. and it makes it, it, it completely takes you away from the so, actual so uh, method of the Prophet. Peace be upon you. You're wow. supposed to lead with wisdom, lead with kindness. Yes. And not every person you meet needs to, you need to give them a debate. Some people need to be educated. Some people that have done the research are worthy of, edu uh, are worthy of a debate. And a lot of times when we debate, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. if there's somebody that's you know, already hardened, we're not debating to convince them. Yeah. Because they might just completely have the yes. lights off. Yes. We're debating for the benefit of the audience. Exactly. We're debating for the benefit of the people at Good. home. So some people might be like, but that, why are you rough with this person? Or why are you tough with him? Yeah, yeah. Are you stern with him? Yeah. Why were you nice with the other person? It's because not every person we're, you know, we're debating them or yeah. we're, we're trying to teach them, we're educating yeah. them. Depends on the energy that's off camera that they've come with. Depends on how they presented themselves. Depends on if they, what's called, are sincere or not. And it depends on if we're worried about the people watching. We want to debunk what's in front of us, or are we trying to teach and learn all together as an audience and as people having the conversation? It's very, very true. Wallahi, this is why. But brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you guys. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Yeah. Oh, okay. There's a pickup.